Why should you even write clean code? Isn't the main goal is to hit the run button and get a functional program? Well, it is true that we write code to solve a problem and get a functional output, but it is not always about the output. With clean and quality code, there is much better readability. When you read clean code, you are able to understand what this variable stores or what this function does, for example. With better readability, you are able to debug easily, so the process of finding bugs and fixing them is much easier when you write clean code, so overall it helps you maintain your code easily. And what if you are working with a team? It is important to acknowledge that other developers are going to read your code, so writing clean and quality code will help others understand your code, hence making collaboration much easier. But the golden question is how to write clean code. Well, in this video, we will go over a few tips that will help you write clean code. It is very important to use descriptive names for variables, functions, class names, and so on. Giving descriptive names allows you to understand easily what this variable stores or what this function does. For example, look at this code. This is a great example of an unclean code. The name of the variables are not descriptive, and the function name definitely won't help us understand what the function does. It is recommended to avoid naming variables and functions using letters like A, B, or X, since it doesn't describe for us what this variable stores or what this function does. It is better to adopt the habit of writing variable and function names that are descriptive, and this will allow us to understand what's going on with our code. Also, you can use multiple cases to be able to write descriptive names, and the three most popular cases are camel case, snake case, and pascal case. With consistent formatting and syntax to recode base, you can easily read your code and understand it. It will become easier for you to debug and read your code line by line, and using good indentation and spacing will help you very much. Take a look at this code. You can see that it is not very appealing and easy to read even though it is a very simple program. But what if you had a larger program with thousands of lines of code? Will it be easier to read? So without spaces and giving your code room to breathe, it will be harder for you to read your code. This is why give your code a little room to breathe, like add a space when assigning a value to a variable or skip lines between a variable and a function, for example. All of this will make it better for you to go through your code and read it line by line to be able to fix a bug or add a new feature. Code reusability is a fundamental concept in programming. With reusable code, developers save time and effort and reduces redundancy. To create reusable code, we can store that piece of code inside functions, because we know that functions can be invoked many times. Take a look at this code. It finds the perimeter and area of a square. However, this is not well organized, and as you can see, there is repetition. And what if I had multiple square? Should I keep on writing the same calculation each time? That is why they say don't repeat yourself. What we can do is create functions that can find the square perimeter and area, and we can call these functions as much as we want. Like this, we are not rewriting the same expression multiple times. We can take this even further by creating a well-organized square class with methods that finds for us the perimeter and area and we could create a square object to work with these methods. Also, we could separate our code into different files. We could have a file that contains our functions, and we could link this file with the main file. And like this, we can keep everything clean and use the functionalities of the other file in the main file. And this is what we do in C++, for example. We separate the declaration inside a header file, and the implementation is written inside another CPP file, which is of course linked to the header file. In programming and software development, spaghetti code is a term to describe a source code that is complex and difficult to understand and maintain. It refers to code that is unorganized and doesn't have a good structure. Let us take a look at this code that takes a number from a user and prints if it is even or odd. However, look at how many if and else statements we have. And this is spaghetti code. It has a repetition and it is hard to maintain. Of course, to find if a number is even or odd, there is a much better way to do that. It is by checking if the remainder of the division by 2 is equal to 0, then it is even, else it is odd. Another example of a spaghetti code is nested for loops, or also nested if statements. To avoid writing spaghetti code, make sure that you have a well-built structure before writing code. Also try to organize your code by separating different functionalities inside functions or files. Like this, you can avoid repetition and overall keep your main code file clean. 
Documentation is an essential part in programming, yet it is a bit neglected by some developers. We might think that it is a waste of time, but honestly, documenting your code helps you to understand the code better in the future, and helps other developers to understand your code easier and faster. With good documentation, it will be easier for developers to debug and maintain the source code. To document your code, you can use comments. Comments are a great way to explain a certain line of code. However, it is important not to use comments excessively, because it can be useless. Only comment lines of code that you think are hard to understand, or you might forget what it will do. Also, you can use documentation to explain, for example, what a certain function will do, like this example in front of you. Before writing the implementation of the function, there is a small documentation that explains what this function does. So writing comments and documentations might seem a bit boring and overwhelming to write, but if you need to explain a certain piece of code or explain what this function does, or your code is shared with other developers, then writing documentation is important. Version control systems like Git offers you the ability to track changes to your code base, collaborate with others, and much more. With version control, you are able to go back to previous versions of your code. It can allow you to commit your changes and view your commits. This could serve as a form of documentation. Also, with version control, you are able to create branches that will help you experiment with your code. Then you can merge your experimentation with the main code base. If you are looking to learn how to use the version control system called Git, I recommend you to check this video. Link will be in the description. So far, we spoke about a few coding conventions that you can follow. Use descriptive and meaningful variable names, like choose a specific case and stick with it. Use spaces and indentation to keep your code well organized. Use functions to store reusable code and separate your work into different files. Add comments and documentation to explain your code, and don't be repetitive and don't overcomplicate your code. Alright, these are a few tips you can apply to start writing clean and quality code. If you have more suggestions or tips, make sure to drop them in the comment section. Thank you for watching this video, and now I invite you to watch one of these end screens that will appear right now, and I hope to see you in one of these videos.